to the source of the problem now, the Gulf of Mexico. BP is attacking the leaking well on two fronts, drilling a relief well and also trying to install a new cap that's intended to capture all the leaking oil. Bloomberg's Lizzie O'Leary had the rare opportunity to see both operations. She flew out to the site yesterday and filed this report. BP's best hopes lie just half a mile from the site of its disaster. Two transocean drilling rigs, each drilling down diagonally, boring ever so slowly toward the damaged well. After a flight over oil streaked water, we touch down on one of the rigs. Roughly 65 boats surround the drilling rigs, ships changing containment caps, a new tanker to collect the oil, a rig burning it out over the ocean, a maze of skimmers and supply boats. Of all of the things up here, probably the most important is right over here. That's the development driller three. It's the rig that is closest to actually intercepting the damage well. Once that happens, they're going to run heavy drilling mud down the relief well to the damage pipe to try to clog up that well, eventually kill it and cap it off with cement. Running both drilling rigs cost BP about $2 million a day. Each one is staffed by roughly 175 people, with an extra supervisor on board for this special job. Drilling a relief well is not that complicated. It's like drilling any other well. Except everyone on board knows these aren't just any other wells. The hardest part would be the stress on these guys trying to get this well drilled and get it killed. And this job is personal. Two of Ed Ruth's friends died on the Deepwater Horizon. Many of the men we spoke with knew someone on that doomed rig. The relief wells aren't a sure thing. They could miss, there could be gas pockets, but the onboard team and BP are hopeful. The company overseeing the operation says it's 40 for 40 in making relief wells work. If well 41 succeeds, that might finally give the Gulf, BP, and the millions of people transfixed by this disaster some relief. Lizzie O'Leary, Bloomberg News, New Orleans.